our first panel session, and I would like to call someone popularly known as Coach Ayobami. So please, forgive me. I know I'm going to butcher his name, but I'm, let's give a round of applause to Coach Ayobami Atolagbe. Let's go. Ambassador Programs Manager at No One's. Let's go. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. All right, let's do this again. Good afternoon, everybody. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to do this pretty fast so that we can get back our time for today. And I'm going to be inviting uh, the panelists, making sure that they come in their full regalia. And in doing that, please put your hands together as I welcome Noelin Sumba. She's the marketing operations of Machankura. Please put your hands together for her. The next person is Dia Reskita, Master CEO of Fedi. Please put your hands together for them. The next person is Kumi Inkasa. Is he here? Kumi Inkasa, founder of Bitcoin Carries. And please don't get tired as we welcome David Mayowa Joy, the product manager of Global Cup. Please put your hands together for them as they come. Don't get tired, man. Bitcoin, right? Put your hands together for them. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. So before they introduce themselves, uh, I'm going to do something pretty fast so that we have an understanding of what we're doing here. Now, we're looking at the Global South in this conversation. So I'm just going to read out something so that we understand the flow and we have at least an idea around that. Now, the Global South uh, is broadly comprises of the African, Latin American, and the Caribbean, Asia without the Israel, Japan, and South Korea, and Oceania without Australia and New Zealand, according to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. All right, with that being said, I've been introduced, right, Ayobami, Ambassador Program Manager, for no ones. And uh, in one minute, I'm going to allow each one of them to introduce themselves. So please, in just one minute, can you just introduce yourselves? Okay. Um, hi, uh, Africa Bitcoin Conference. Uh, my name is Nolin. I work with a company called Machankura, um, facilitating transfer, sending and receiving of Bitcoin uh, without internet connection. Uh, besides that, I'm very passionate about Bitcoin. I uh, can say I'm a Bitcoin advocate, uh, Bitcoin educator, and I'm glad to be back in Accra for another year. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Africa. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, everyone. My name is Dea Reskita. I'm uh, from uh, Indonesia, and I'm also working at FEDI as the community master for Southeast Asia. Uh, really happy to be here, uh, and yeah, we are Fedi. You you probably already try our Fedi Alpha. Um, it's a super app with money and chat, and everything is there. Awesome. Hi everyone, welcome to Ghana. We say Aquaba. Aquaba. My name is Kumin Kansa. Um, I'm a broadcast journalist and the founder of Bitcoin Carries. Bitcoin Carries is aimed at educating people in Ghana and the rest of Africa on Bitcoin, orange peeling people with the best product and services and then giving them the best advices when it comes to um, using Bitcoin. Currently um, working with Trezor to come up with uh, the Bitcoin data for West Africa, also aimed at educating people all over Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Joy David. I currently work as a product manager in the private capital market space. However, that's not why I'm here. I'm very curious about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, and that led me to do my research projects at the London School of Economics last year, where I investigated the use of cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin, for cross-border payments in the Global South, using the case study of retailers in Nigeria using cryptocurrencies to transact millions of Naira monthly from China, importing goods from China. And I'm really happy to be here. Hi, everyone. Awesome. Please put your hands together again for the panelists. All right, we are talking on the topic of uh, adoption and community building, lessons from the global south. And uh, to break that down a little bit, we're looking at some key points which relates to the local context and how that's including cultural, economic, and regulatory factor, 
uh, the influence that influence the adoption and community building processes. And they said that wherever there's challenges, there's money, right? So we're looking at the challenges, uh, identifying and discussing the specific challenges unique to Global South and how they have been navigated. And definitely we have some success stories. Uh, so we're gonna look at the highlight success stories about vibrant communities, have been, how they have been successful over a lot of things despite the challenges. And most importantly, the sustainability part of it, which is the community engagement. Uh, so we're gonna discuss the strategies employed to actively engage and involve the community in the adoption process. So are we good to go? All right, so uh, we're gonna have some line of questions to help our audience understand this better. So the first one is, and which is gonna flow from my left, my closest left, to, to Joy down there. What strategies has been effective in educating communities about the benefits and risk associated with Bitcoin? And how can education and awareness campaign be further enhanced? Okay, um, thank you, Ayubami. So, um, if, when I'm looking at the strategies that have been effective so far, um, personally, I've had currently a year of actively working on uh, Bitcoin education. Um, I can see Marcel is here, Bitcoin Dada. So I think that's one of the main um, ways, having community-driven education, um, such that the people in the community are in charge of the education. Um, it has been very, very effective um, in terms of um, bringing in more people. Um, another way in which uh, I feel is tailoring most of the technology to suit the people. Um, okay. Machankura, because um, I've been working closely the, with Machankura, trying to gain its user growth in Kenya, and I've seen it really um, change the game in terms of uh, onboarding people. It's a bit more easier right now when people have technology that they can understand and use easily. Mm -hmm. It's uh, quite easy in terms of uh, bringing in more people into Bitcoin. And um, another thing, maybe we have a challenge in terms of doing is mostly encouraging entrepreneurship in Bitcoin spaces. Um, as I keep on saying, quit your fiat job and join Bitcoin. <laughs> we need lots of workers in Bitcoin. Um, if we can be able to have more Bitcoin companies, more Bitcoin merchants, I think we'll have uh, adoption gain uh, even faster in, in the continent. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So in in Southeast Asia especially, or like in Asia in general, um, it's a bit different probably in Africa. A lot of people in here also speak um, you know, good English, and especially in West Africa, where in uh, Southeast Asia, most people have different language. So language is actually a big barrier for uh, education. Uh, so uh, one of the strategy that I think really helpful, what I see also uh, like in Thailand, in Indonesia, um, in Vietnam is that uh, translating all the good content out local there context. in local language yeah. and also adding local context because um, I think everyone in Global South experience at some point like inflation or even hyperinflation. This also happened in, in, in Southeast Asia and I know it like also happened in, in, in uh, Africa. So uh, providing local context is very important when you are teaching people about Bitcoin because everyone in the world right now is facing in, uh, problems with inflation. So that's um, one of the things that we need to cover, like, you know, what are the problems that exist and uh, how Bitcoin can actually solve that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Hello. Hi. All right. Um, so to the strategies that um, we can adopt, I, I live in Accra. I am a Ghanaian. I was born up here, and I know how it feels like to be raised here and to have a mind or to read about a better environment other than here. Hmm. And then you are still with the mindset that, no, there is still good out of here. So one of the strategies I am applying when it comes to advancing Bitcoin education is to always not to have a predictive overview of the people you hmm. are going to talk to. The area they are in, who they are, or their backgrounds, you shouldn't have a predictive um, overview of them. One thing that is really working for me is having an open mindset, just like how Bitcoin is, is open to everyone and everybody can have access to it. If we should approach 
education with that kind of open mindset and not limited to who you are, what kind of phone you're using, what your background is, what your educational level is, but rather open up. You can be, you know, Bitcoin education, they say sometimes it's hard, but then you can have a lot of information and still talk to someone as if you are just like them. Sure. With that, there's a connection in between the two of you. Sure. You could be speaking different languages, but the kind of connection you make out of not having a pre-perceived mindset of the person, you'll be able to communicate without noticing it because you didn't put any barrier before the two of you or between the two of you. So I, I, I would say moving on from now, one of the strategies Bitcoin educators must adopt is that kind of open mindset whereby we would approach everybody and everyone with the same kind of energy, irrespective of where they find themselves, how they are looking, or where they find themselves. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you very much. Thank you. George? Um, I think I'll go by saying that what does Bitcoin mean to you um, is different from what Bitcoin means to a computer nerd in the US or in London. And it's very, very different from what Bitcoin means to people who actually need it here in Africa. Um, while doing my research, while talking to a lot of people, something I found that became true is necessity became the model of invention. Um, Bitcoin, the, the people who were using Bitcoin, the retailers, um, they didn't use it because they were tech savvy, they aren't. Um, they didn't use it because the environment they were in enabled the use of such technology, it didn't. But why they were using Bitcoin was because they needed to use it. Um, they were engaged in business and there was no way to import. There was no way to feed their families. Um, someone, one of, one of the quotes from my research, someone said it was costing him almost his kidney to actually do business and feed his family. Wow. And that was how he started using Bitcoin. But the interesting thing is, like Femi was saying, um, in using Bitcoin as a medium of exchange, a lot of the retailers who are now using Bitcoin, as you know, according to chain analysis, um, Nigeria is now one of the top users mm -hmm. of cryptocurrency, followed by these retailers. And a lot of the, these retailers actually do not know that they are using cryptocurrency for their, for their importing. What they just know is they have over-the-counter exchangers who they give their fiat currency to, and, it's able, and they are able to help them pay their Chinese manufacturers and help them import um, their goods. And the strategy these OTC exchangers and mediators, a strategy they used to actually get these retailers to trust them, to give them the currency, is a technique in information systems we call problematization. And that means that human beings are quite selfish. Everyone has their own interests. A retailer who is trying to make money is not interested in a new technology. He's interested in making money. So when you meet people about Bitcoin or about cryptocurrency, you meet them at the point of their needs. Sure. So you explain how Bitcoin, is how Bitcoin is going to be solving that problem it is that you want them to use Bitcoin for. And that's exactly what happened. So this, um, we call them focal actors, these exchangers, they went to these retailers, they told them based on these social conditions, we know the foreign currency restrictions, the inflation, um, you are unable to import as much as you like, but I can help you. And, and then they, to, to get their trust, they said something like, I will do it for free. I can even use my own money <laughs> to get the goods into, and then you pay me back later. Sure. So by that time, they've met them at the point of their needs. They are interested, and it's at no cost to them. So they were able to see that their goods, after in less than two seconds, the OTC exchange was able to make payment to their Chinese manufacturer, get their goods into, into the country. And those retailers then became ambassadors of Bitcoin themselves. Even if they, they don't understand the technology, they don't, they, like when Femi was saying something about his grandmother not understanding the Android sure. ecosystem, it's been abstracted from them. They don't understand the technicalities of how it works. What, what they do know is that it works. All They've right. seen it work. Awesome. So they become ambassadors, awesome. also bringing in people to use crypto Great. on Bitcoin. So, so, please, if you want to clap, you just go ahead and clap, right? All right, so, so take, thank you. So taking it up from, from Joy, it's just a matter of being the solution to people's problem, that's at least the first step to education itself. They might not understand the technology, even the nitty gritty, but that would be a way to actually create a solution and also educate. And um, uh, I was able to get from, from Kumi uh, when he was talking about having to 
to, 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 to be a plain sheet, if I can use that word to qualify. They don't assume before you meet people, before you transact, even before you travel to other country, be as plain as possible to make sure that you are dealing on an open sheet. You are not having a premeditated thought around something. And by the way, Nigeria alone is having hundred and something languages. So that is an issue. In, in So localizing content as well is a very good one when it comes to education. And I'm very sure Machakura has been doing an awesome one, making it very easy. So I'm going to take it off from, from Joy uh, it, as well. So we're going to come all the way from there. So what are some innovative approaches to Bitcoin being used in Global South? Um, again, I think the one thing that Bitcoin has proved is it can be used for cross can you hear me? More louder. It's that it can be used for cross-border payments. Um, in information systems, between 2000 to 2015, a lot of scholars were 100% sure that cryptocurrencies were not going to take up in the global south. They were so convinced because, um, as we all know, there is a digital divide. Uh, most times, the global south will lag behind the global north when it comes to technologies. So Bitcoin, as it is, technically, is quite complex. So these scholars said it was never going to be used. Mm -hmm. But one of the innovative approach that um, Bitcoin is being used now, which was my research, is for cross-border payments. It's the peer-to-peer -peer system allows you to come to exit from the financial system, to exit from a lot of the infrastructure, SWIFT, and all of the things that go in between um, making payments for like payment to China, for instance. So one of the innovative approaches is definitely um, cross-border payments. Awesome. Kumi? It's good. Well, so to add to cross-border payments, if you should look at what Bitcoin is doing on the African continent right now, it's countless, the kind of innovative ways um, Bitcoin is being used in Africa currently. It will, be, it will amaze you if we should say you're going on a list as to what is happening, the kind of services the Lightning Network is providing. I mean, we're having services we never thought would hurt. Mm -hmm. I could sit in my phone, I could sit in my room and then create a credit card within a second. I'm making purchases on Alibaba and paying for shipment and it's sure. coming to me. I'm here and I, I am ha I'm having double access to um, different countries seems I mean, if you should look at how easy Bitcoin is opening up uh, opportunities for us, and with the introduction of the Lightning Network, sure. I feel if we should look at all the various products, let's just cast your mind on the ecosystem, the kind of products that are running on the Lightning systems, and then opportunities that are given to us. It is one of the ways which is actually speeding up adoption, because if you should get to know what you can do with a Lightning Network, uh -huh. the various services, airtime to data, data to airtime. In Ghana, you can actually even pay for the electricity bill with um, Bitcoin. Awesome. So if you should look at the various products and services coming, then you would know, wow, Bitcoin is actually leading or opening up good opportunities for Africans. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I guess like, uh, yeah, like what Kumi said, that you know, there's so many Lightning Network application out there, and I think this is how um, the innovation, like what come from Fedi, really helpful because everything you can access all of this really cool application in one place, and and this is can make it very interesting for like different community have a different uh, way to interact with each other, right? Sure. So um, we see the potential, like you know, ha having Having like app like a like Fedi can really helpful for people, especially people who don't know. Who might think in in like in Southeast Asia where they mostly think Bitcoin as a store of value, unlike like in Africa where you guys are doing it as a medium of exchange. Yeah. Now, if there is like an app um, like Fedi where people can uh, use Bitcoin for many things, for buying phone refill or for for buying um, also like uh, to cash out or asking. AI, like chat GPT, like this is something that really, really cool, like a lot of innovation is happening. But one of the key things I see in, South, at least in, in, in the in Asia, um, having a technology that can help you to save is very important mm. because uh, a lot of people already forgot about saving. Sure. But saving is actually our uh, path to to be independent, to be liberated, you know? If you're, if you're continuously just like taking loans or getting in debt, now you are like part of the system and, and um, having Bitcoin as a saving technology 
that cannot be confiscated is very useful, not only for people in Asia, but also in Africa. Mm. Towards world's creation. Yeah. All oh, right. I'd like to take it uh, straight home. Um, what I've seen mostly is the empowerment. Um, the empowerment that Bitcoin has brought, especially because I work with mostly young people, I've seen a change in behavior, um, especially from trying to spend money. And uh, right now they're interested in, in saving. I work with a lot of young people in carrying out my, my uh, my work, basically, and uh, ask uh, around here, who here has their mother, father, wife, kids using Bitcoin? Maybe by a show of hands. Very few hands. Awesome. Very, very few <laughs> hands. And uh, you are the people that need to start this. Um, there's a quote, uh, maybe KG, I don't know whether he's here. He had put out that hyper-Bitcoinization starts at home. If I tell my mother, my father, if I have my mother and father transacting in Bitcoin. It starts from there. Um, I transact with my siblings uh, using mm. Bitcoin. Um, like Mary has her sister here yeah. using Bitcoin. And uh, you'd be so surprised um, the change in mindset that comes from a person realizing they have a currency that, ga that retains its value over time. Sure. So um, I've been able to see that. I hope so many people can be able to experience that. I hope you can be able to transfer this. Um, new knowledge that the tech is uh, changing, not mm -hmm. just in terms of financial, but uh, also psychologically. And uh, yeah, it will be great. So that's one of the uh, greatest things I've seen. Awesome. In terms of so I think uh, speaking on that is more like people will trust uh, the system more when you know it's coming from somebody close to them. Yes, uh, I think so, absolutely. Um, and rather, it's people you know. Um, if, you, if I introduce somebody onto a lightning wallet and uh, it has a problem, it's easy for them to contact me and for me to be able to reach a developer. So uh, there's this thing, six degrees of separation. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, so it just depends on your circle. Uh, that's the main way I've seen community building really working. Uh, it starts from home. Um, so have your family get to use it, use it with them, then after that move to friends and uh, with time I think we're going to see adoption really grow in the continent because awesome. uh, it's a huge continent, we should not be, <laughs> I saw the Africa pre-routing stats, I was so surprised, I knew it was low but I didn't expect it to be that low okay. um, and there's a lot that we can still do oh, okay. for sure. Great, yeah. so this question goes to Dear. Uh, most of us right now we've downloaded if 30 Alpha. Uh, but I just want us to I want us to talk more a little bit. Uh, can you take us through a case study of how Fedi can help people in the global south? Uh, maybe pick a community and walk us through how the the adopted and also deploy Fedi to achieve something. Now this could be a real case study or maybe hypothetically. Yeah, like um, <clears throat> I mean, when when you are using Fedi, like you are creating a federation, um, and then Within, within the Fedi app, you can create uh, any, or like adding like all the application that is really useful for your community. So like let's say, um, yeah, like this conference, right? Like we have uh, an app where you can see the schedule of the conference, you can chat with people, and then you can send payment because, because money and communication is a very important part of uh, community building. Um, so because like we are, th that's how we interact with each other. So like, at the moment with with Fedi, we are trying to build um, a, a really good app where it's very versatile for whatever you want to do with the community, and then well, and then we can build an, a module on top of that. Um, so yeah, like the the conference is one of the example, or uh, especially for for newbies. For us as Bitcoiners, it's very easy that, oh yeah, oh I want to I wanna buy a SIM card or I want to buy an eSIM and you can go to BitRefill. Mm. But for newbies, they, they probably don't know. They probably just got stuck like, okay, I'm just buying a Bitcoin sure. and then that's it. Or maybe I can send payments to you, I can send money, but there are so much possibilities that a lot of newbies uh, are not aware of. So if you are like part of the community and then you introduce uh, all these different uh, apps within one single uh, feature, like a, like a feature, mm -hmm. it will be very easy for, for everyone now to start using Bitcoin and see the big potential of Bitcoin. 
or before I leave you, uh, FEDI has been used in different areas, in different regions. Can, can you share more insights based on what you've learned so far? Um, so what we learn is that um, when you take out, like we, we try to do Bitcoin education, uh, and then, uh, yeah, like you start with like what is money and then you talk about like the problems of the economy right now. It, most people don't really, like some, some maybe they, they start understanding about the importance of Bitcoin, but once they are using Bitcoin and they see the, the, the potential, now they get interested to know more about Bitcoin. That's sure. what we see so far when we do this, all these tests in different regions. Um, especially for the newbies or people who, who probably like um, focusing a lot on crypto. Like they always think Bitcoin is very, very boring uh, coins, right? And, and they, they think like, oh yeah, you know, this token can do this, this token can do that. So like when we show them the potential of what we can do with Bitcoin, use cases. They, see, they see that, um, oh, actually Bitcoin can do more. Like, and then why I use the other coins, oh, you know? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, uh, dear. Uh, as we come to a wrap, as we wrap this up, <clears throat> I, I believe in looking at adoption and community building, it's very important to look at the sustainability part of it. So uh, community building uh, is a dynamic process that requires sustained efforts, right? Now, could you share an example of how communities in the Global South have maintained and strengthened their Bitcoin communities? over time, and most importantly, practical to what you're doing, what are the key elements that has worked for you in sustaining enthusiasm and engagement within this community? So I'm going to start with Kumi, then I'm going to be calling each person individually. All right, sure. Thank you very much for the question. So you're talking about what are some of the things you have to do to sustain the, the community, enthusiasm yeah. to build and to keep the economy running, specifically a Bitcoin circular economy. Sure. So. Um, in introducing a, a group or let's say a community to Bitcoin, you should have certain priorities in your mind. Mm. So first off, there are certain communities you don't really need to um, have the mindset you wanna uh, build a Bitcoin circular economy. All you have to do is try and go in, look at the hotspots, the kind of people that you can talk to, and then you orange peel them. You realize with the kind of key people you started with, it will trickle down automatically on its own. Those type of economies are very, very, very strong. And then on the, on the other hand, you can be very specific and say, all right, I want to build a Bitcoin circular economy within this community. What are the strategies I'm going to use? So with one of the Bitcoin circular economies um, we are building in Ghana, it was specific. We made up our mind, okay, we, were going, to, we are going to build a Bitcoin circular economy out of this community. What are the strategies we're going to use, and how are we going to keep the momentum and the energy so it will build on? Now okay. let's go to it. All right. So to, to, to get you right, you said that instead of being a generalist, it's better to have a, to be a specialist first, so that they can bind into your vision and you can build on that on that idea. Kind of the same, but let me break it down a bit. So All right. two ways. Uh, I was I, 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 I'm using myself as an example. So there are communities I go to but I don't have the mindset of uh, building a circular economy out of them. Okay. But the mindset I have there is to get Bitcoin running in the community and leave the community to grow naturally on their own okay. using the key people I started with. So this is what I have done in certain communities. Where do the guys hang out? Where do the ladies hang out? Where do the community hang out? Where is their football field? Do they meet up regularly there? These are the places that are my target. So I go there, these are the places I do my first introduction. Yeah, so okay. my first introduction isn't with one person. It's usually with a group of people. Awesome. So by the time you're done, everybody takes the information. If the number is quite enough, you don't need to press so much. Allow them to naturally, yeah, naturally trickle down and then you see questions coming up. So that's the first step. And then the other strategy is, be specific, I want to build a Bitcoin circular economy. Then you lay down strategies you want to use. What is it you're going to use from the environment to entice them? What is it they are doing they will regularly want to Great. engage in daily? Now you put Bitcoin into it. Awesome. So if it's, it's a football they are into, what is it you're going to do with Bitcoin? Using, using football that they love to entice them. So you spark up their energy using Bitcoin. And with Bitcoin on top of it, 
they're going to come every day. So there's a community in Accra here. It's called Jamestown. There are a lot of musicians and dancers there. Mm -hmm. We could easily start a Bitcoin circular economy there if we say we want to be specific. But then me and my team, we sat down and we said, okay, let's get all the good artists together. Mm. Let's orange peel them. They are the artists. Now awesome. they have fans. Awesome. So if an artist is going to go on stage and tell you, yo, guys, I'm not a Bitcoin, <laughs> I use Bitcoin. Every artist, so we got like nine artists, more, and all more, these more, nine more. artists are having followers. Sure. So they are doing the work on their own. Bitcoin is just trickling down in the community based on the key people we picked out there. So that community is all talking about Bitcoin and it's growing naturally on its own. Once in a while, they call me, oh, we have a shop that wants to accept Bitcoin. You go in and then you go and awesome. help them. Awesome. That wasn't specific compared to the other specific Great. ones. That one we said, all right, uh, they like football. They have a community center. Let's refurbish the community center. Let's get some kids ready. Now we are going to train the kids. These kids' parents are going to ask what they are children are asking. Their school teachers are going to ask, what is it you people have been doing in the community mm. center you're doing? So from that specific idea you build on, it trickles down into the community. All right. So, so they, are doing, they are learning about Bitcoin while doing what they love doing. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very yes. much. Joy? Um, the question is how to sustain the communities. Yeah, basically, like based on community building, the enthusiasm, what strategies will you use to sustain that? I think what sustains the community is trust. So like I've described in the community, in, again, the case study I used was actually in Comta Village in Lagos. Um, and the community of people using cryptocurrency is being sustained by trust. And not just trust in the technology to work. Again, like I mentioned, they don't even know the technology. It's also trust in the different key actors, the different key players involved in the technology. Trust that each time they want to make a payment, each time they want to import goods, definitely that person they send their money to will get it done. And one of the retailers actually described their OTC exchange as a bank. So to him, he, he no longer needs to use one of the banks we are familiar with in Nigeria anymore because he has a bank very close to him that he just gives money to and by some magic, now the magic now is Bitcoin, we know it's Bitcoin, sure. but by some magic, um, the money gets to China so fast and he gets his goods. It's also trust that um, this OTC exchanger will not run away with his money. Um, the OTC exchanger who is also sending the money, the cryptocurrency to China, is also trust that that manufacturer is going to get um, their money and will actually deliver the goods. And one of the strategies, one of the ways that they've been able to maintain the trust in the community is actually by using technology, not just Bitcoin, but like this peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure, like one of our sponsors, Yellow Card, mm -hmm. um, because they use those exchange platforms as an escrow system. So they will tell the retailer that, okay, we are going to be keeping your money in this escrow. It's going to be here until your, your goods get to Nigeria and then we'll send the money. So it's not in the hands of one of them. It's actually in the hands of a technology. So they are using technology not just Bitcoin, but they're also using this peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure platforms awesome. as an escrow system in order to maintain those, awesome. that trust. So, so, it's, so, so it's in the point of don't trust verify. Since mm -hmm. everything is already there, the blockchain, everything can be verified. So they don't actually, now I'm buying the aspect of the trust, but the trust is based on technology. So you don't necessarily have to trust. You just have to verify because it's on the blockchain technology, right? Not, 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 not really. I mean, it's, it's trust in technology as well, but it's also trust in people. Because again, the retailers don't know anything about blockchain technology. Oh, okay. Um, they need to trust that. So it's, it's a network of different players, and each player has a part to play. So the retailer needs to trust the, the focal actor, the person who gets them, who, who they give the fiat to. The person who collects the fiat also needs to trust the OTC exchanger, who they exchange the fiat into Bitcoin to. So all of these different parties need to trust themselves. And we humans are not so trustworthy. So it's, you are trusting people, you are trusting people, but those, like, the retailer trusts the person, the person trusts the OTC exchanger because of a platform like Yellow Card, for instance. So it's both, techno it's both trust in technology and trust in people. So okay. technology and people working hand, to hand in hand together to sustain that community. Awesome. So, uh, uh, Nolin, do you want to speak on that? Um, so for me, what I can say is uh, how to maintain the enthusiasm, what I've seen working. Um, uh, as I already mentioned, like, uh, 
having it as community-driven initiative. Um, for example, with uh, Bitcoin data, I'll go back to uh, Lorraine. Um, so for her, being as a community leader, teaching people, it's easier for them to trust her. And uh, they can always get back to her if they want to inquire anything about Bitcoin. And the other thing is uh, meeting people where they're at. Um, instead of trying to get each and every business uh, to accept Bitcoin, let's have the people who are already doing business in that accepting um, Bitcoin. So um, back again to her as an example, I have seen her her students uh, being able to accept Bitcoin as payments. Uh, there's also, we have the call with Felix, he's good at printing. They were like, okay, fine, if you're good at that, we can be able to use this service, let's have you incorporate Bitcoin. Um, the, maybe the other thing we need right now, it's a friendly UX. We still have a problem, especially in terms of uh, maybe on ramps. Um, I had uh, Femi talk about it. I hope uh, it's in the works, in the developers in their room. It's uh, one thing that I guess if people can build transact easily, they even psyched up about the technology. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one of the key areas that uh, maybe we need to look at. Um, otherwise, uh, it, enthusiasm is more of personal. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, and uh, with good dedication, um, maybe if we, in terms of if they get somebody they like, Speak, hearing speak about Bitcoin, it's another way to I, 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 get people enthusiastic. Um, I think you, you, you've, you've given all the points. I'll have yeah. some points for, <laughs> point for Dia as well. So Dia, do you just want to give us some points yeah, in regards ahead. to that as well? <clears throat> I, think, I, I think like, you know, like um, to keep it like, sus, like sustain like all this community builder, um, it needs also like consistency for them to continue doing the education, continue like, you know, going to community. And that, uh, yeah, it always needs to come from like, um, you know, uh, grassroots. Like they, they, they maybe like doing a lot of meetups, a lot of, uh, a lot of like content. It's very hard to like keep continue doing the content, right? Like it yeah. takes a lot of discipline. Sure, sure. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like I think, uh, like uh, uh, what everyone's already said in here, like you know, uh, we as like like builders probably also need to provide like a good UX, uh, cr continue creating a good uh, application that will help people to easily onboard people, sure. and also keep continue using Bitcoin. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, based on all the information that has been shared by our panelists, uh, it's very important when it comes to adoption and also community building, as we can hear from them all. One, it's very important that we understand this. And Femi said something earlier, but I want to make sure that, or I put it this way, it's better off we keep the product growing and we also keep the education going. Because we cannot just pick products and keep producing products without people learning about the base understanding and knowledge. So it's very important for us to have the product going and also to have the education on the side. That is my view. Right? So thank you so much. Please put your hands together for our panelists as they take their seats. Thank you so much.